any sperm freezing you should know about. Uh, there are men who are about to undergo terrible cancer treatment. And uh, nowadays with modern cancer treatment, especially we have some great cancer centers in St. Louis, uh, men who we thought were going to die are really surviving and surviving with really great health, uh, terrible cancers that would have killed them five years ago. And they want to have children. So we really think it's very important that all men about to have cancer treatment should have just one ejaculate frozen. Now that wasn't done in the past because uh, the oncologists, the cancer doctors figure well you had to get 20 ejaculates to really give them a pretty good assurance that with multiple inseminations they'd eventually get a pregnancy and a baby and so they didn't want to bother with it and delay treatment. But with the ICSI technique we developed at St. Luke's all we need is one ejaculate. You don't even have to save up for two or three days. Just come in whenever you want because the smallest amount of sperm can be frozen and that's all we need for almost an infinite number of ICSI cycles. So we want to encourage anyone who's about to have any therapy that could lower their sperm count or make them sterile to have their sperm frozen first and uh, ICSI will solve it and that's all they need is one quick uh, sample. Now, the same applies to women in a different way. It's more difficult in women, but it should be mentioned. When women have this prospect of cancer treatment, we uh, uh, developed a method that was first invented in England by Roger Gosden for actually freezing her ovarian tissue. And the ovarian tissue can be stored and saved for if she's ever cured of her cancer for having future children. Uh, but there are some difficulties, and it's still experimental, and it's just the, her only chance, and uh, that's why we would want to freeze ovarian tissue. We are on the verge of a breakthrough in being able to freeze eggs. Now, remember I told you that we freeze embryos, and we don't. it doesn't really look like we're damaging those embryos. Uh, the results are fantastic. The babies are normal. Long-term follow-up is great. Uh, but the reason we can get away with that with embryos is that uh, they have multiple cells and each one of those cells is in a stable state where the, it's just got its 46 chromosomes and it's just making DNA and it's, they're, they're not really preparing to divide, which is a complicated process which occurs on a spindle. Whereas the egg that we retrieve with IVF is in a complicated process of reducing chromosomes from 46 to 23. It's in a process of division. And at that moment, that brief moment in, the, in any cell cycle, it's very prone to the slightest freezing damage that really wouldn't be of any consequence to, a, to an ordinary cell. So egg freezing up until now has really not worked. And egg freezing is important for cancer patients or for women who want to put off childbearing and aren't married yet and would like to save their fertility for the future. But a new method developed actually in Japan uh, is going to come very, very soon in which uh, hopefully, and it'll be a study, I'm not saying this is definite yet, we'd have to study it experimentally, whereby the eggs can be frozen successfully so we can preserve your fertility into the future, even if you're not yet married or and don't have your husband.